you would please stand. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Sometimes you just can't explain it and you don't have to, amen? If you ever met him, you'll never be the same. If you've ever met him, you'll never be the same. As I was sitting there, that's all I know to do is to be obedient. There may be somebody here today that's never met him, and you need to meet him. And right now is the time to meet him. I don't know whoever said that we closed the altars during a service. These altars ain't never closed. They're open 24-7. If you're here today and you just need a touch, you just need to meet the Savior. He's here. His arms are open wide. If you're lost and never, ever, ever asked Jesus in your life, today is the day of salvation. If you're here today and, and you've wandered far away, like the prodigal, you far in a far country. You've wasted your whole life in a far country. It's time to come back home. You're here today and you're a Christian and you know you're a Christian. But man, you just feel like throwing in the towel and quitting. Because there just ain't no use. Jesus is standing here with arms wide open. Do you need to come today? The altars are open for just a few minutes and then I'm going to preach. Do you need to come? I'm not begging you. I'm not pleading. I just feel like the Lord's told me to do this. Amen. Thank you. If you got your Bibles, turn them to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> Me and Frank, I know this is unorthodox for a lot of churches. They have staff meetings. They plan a year out in sermons. and They get together and, and plan the music with the sermon. And I 
I can't do that because I just, I mean, I'm just obedient to the Lord. And, but it's amazing how he works things out. We're in the book of Acts this morning. And every song we've sung has been about the presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and so if you're in Acts chapter 2, turn, if you would, to verse 41. Coming off the resurrection in the first part of Acts, we've, we saw of Jesus' resurrection. He's been among his people. He's ascended and promised that the Spirit has come. They're waiting on the Holy Spirit. Sir, Peter's preached a sermon. 3,000 has been added to the church. And we come to verse 41. It says, And then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and the breaking of bread and prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread. From house to house did eat their meat and with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Father, bless the reading of your word. Lord, we just pray, God, that we'll be obedient, empty us of ourselves, fill us with your spirit. Lord, may you be uplifted, may you be praised, may you be glorified. Lord, we pray that you draw all men to yourself. Lord, just have your will and way, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. I read this passage of scripture, and I think about a healthy church. A healthy church. Sometimes you hear someone say this. It could never be said about me, but they say this. That boy is healthy. Well, what they really mean is that boy's fat. <laughs> and does big really mean healthy? Not really. And does a big church really mean that it's healthy? I heard some shocking news today, and this ain't no slap on the face to any one other church. I heard yesterday at Greer goes global, there was one church represented. That's all that was saw with a booth or, or whatever. It was one church. And I'm proud to say it was Appalachian Baptist Church. What that tells me is that, is that the church has lost its focus. You see, and the reason why we go to church is so that the preacher will entertain us and take his coat off and throw it to the choir loft or that we get, we get lights and mirrors and flashing. You know, we just come to church and be entertained. I know that because I had a preacher tell me that he loves, he loves loud, energetic preaching, and I love preaching loud and energetic and probably will before this sermon's over with, but I'm just saying that's why people come to church sometimes. Is see the preacher energetic and see the preacher throwing stuff and see, a, see the choir leader up here just bouncing up and down. and, and, and lead. They come to church to be entertained. I love praise. I love worship. And I, and I love getting active in, in a worship service. And I, I just think that's the way it, it, it's designed to be and, and that we're to worship the Lord and people worship him differently. And we're going to see in just a moment this church praise God. But that's not what it makes a healthy church is bouncing up and down and, and loud preaching and being entertained. What, what makes a healthy church healthy? Luke gives us what I believe an important and helpful description of, of what a healthy body of the early church looked like and what our church today should represent. We're never going to be a perfect church because we're made up of flawed people. If you're not here today and you're flawed, if you're here today and you're not flawed, raise your hand. Because me and you need to talk. We need to talk. I need to figure out how you're doing it. 
Because we're all flawed in this place. And because we're flawed, we're never going to be a perfect church. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't strive to be. I think we should try, strive to be a healthy and alive church. And Luke tells us the characteristics of a spirit-filled church. He, he tells us what made this church healthy and alive. And if you want to look uh, at it from a, from a workout point of view, from, from getting in shape, then, then we can look at it that, from that way. He gives us the diet. He gives us the exercises uh, program of a healthy church in verses 41 through verse 47. But before digging in into this church, we, we need to remember how this church started. Peter, we just come off Easter. Peter preached Christ, buried, dead, buried, and resurrected. That's what he preached. 3,000 souls uh, were saved. We just read about it. And now uh, that is a, that's, that's spirit-filled preaching, if you would. God builds his church, I remind you, by his word. God has a plan, and his plan is bigger than any idea uh, or conversation of a few individuals. God's plan is bigger than, than a few conversations and, and a few individuals' plans for the church. God's plan is bigger than that. Christianity is personal, but it's not to be done alone. It's corporate worship for a reason. Because it's God's plan, it's an important plan. And we must understand as a church how a church is supposed to be and what we're supposed to do. First of all, I want us to look this morning at the testimony of a healthy church. That's what we have in verses 41 through 47, the testimony of a healthy church. First of all, let's notice that they were devoted to the Scripture. Verse 42, the first part of verse 42 says, And they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, in the apostles' teaching. Verse 43 says, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostle. Luke tells us that the early church was devoted to certain exercises. The study of the apostles' doctrine and the teaching of Scripture made the top of the list. The apostles taught everyone that would listen about the Messiah from the scriptures. They didn't teach their agenda. They didn't teach their policy. I remind us as a good old Baptist church, they didn't teach the Constitution and bylaws. They taught the scriptures and what the scriptures had to say. It's the Spirit lives inside of you, church. If the Spirit lives inside of you, Christian, listen, you can't help but be attracted and crave the Scripture. If you never read your Bible, if you never open up the Scripture, if you never crave to read the Word of God, I question whether or not you've ever had a personal relationship with the author of the Scripture. Because if you, the Spirit lives inside of you, you're going to crave to lead, read what the Father's left us and the instructions that the Father has left us to read for our Christian walk. They were devoted to the Scripture. The apostles told everyone about the Messiah and he lives and that he was buried, dead, buried, and resurrected. A healthy church means that the main course, our main diet, of a healthy church is going to be the scripture which tells us people if, if we if the scriptures our main diet it's our main course it's going to tell people about the savior that's our job in preaching the gospel is to tell people about the scripture not only were they devoted to the scripture but this spirit-filled, healthy church was devoted to each other. Let me repeat that one. This church was devoted to each other. Look at the second part of verse 42. It says, and fellowship. And verse 44 says, and all that believed were together and all things common. They were devoted to each other. 
After Luke tells them that a healthy church diet is to be on the scripture, he gives them the diet. He moves to the exercise program. He, he moves to, to what's going to keep them in shape, and that's fellowship. The church was united by the scripture, which caused them to come together in love and support of each other. Look at the person beside you. If you don't care if it is your wife. And tell them, you're not my enemy. The person on the other side. Jerry, you didn't tell Judy. The person on the other side of you is not your enemy. There's nobody sitting in this church today your enemy. If they are, they're not your brother and sister in Christ. They were devoted to each other. The scripture called them, caused them to be close and, and united with each other. The kind of fellowship that comes from fellowship with the Father. Listen, if you've been in the scripture and had fellowship with the Father... That's an indication that you got fellowship and then you're going to have fellowship with your fellow believers that says you've been in the word and that you love your brother and sister in Christ. You see, some of you hadn't had fellowship with the Father so you can't have, get along with anybody else. Some of you hadn't had fellowship with the Father so you can't get along with anyone else. You know why I know that? Because you're even like yourself. If people are out of fellowship with Christ, then they're going to be out of fellowship with the church. And if people are out of fellowship with Jesus' people, the indicator might be that they're out of fellowship with Jesus. There's at least 23, at least, a good old, a good old Bible software search. There's at least 23 one another scriptures in the New Testament. I'm not going to give you all 23 of them. But we who are many are one body in Christ and individual members of one another. Romans 12, 5. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Romans 12, 10. I, I like this one. Outdo one another in showing honor. Revelation 12, 10. The members would have the same concern for each other. 1 Corinthians 12, 5. Serve one another through love. Galatians 5, 13. Here's one for you. Carry one another's burdens. Uh, here's another one. With patience, bearing one another's love. Be kind and compassionate one another. In humility, consider others as important as yourselves. Encourage one another. Always pursue what is good for one another. Here you go. Well, let's watch out for one another to provoke love and good works. Don't criticize one another, brothers and sisters. Do not complain about one another. There's a bunch of one another scriptures in the Bible. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 tells us that this church was one together. They were united in love. Listen, all of you are clothed yourselves with humility, humi humility toward one another. 1 Peter 5, 6. We need to come together as one. Nobody said it would be easy. That's why that one verse says with patience. We have to be long-suffering <laughs> Sometimes I believe we as Christians go through the fruit of the Spirit and pick out which one we want to be. And that's not the case at all. There's some we all need to work on, for sure. But we're to be all those fruit of the Spirit, not just which ones we wake up and feel like doing. We need to love one another. Nobody said it'd be easy. Do you realize the source of encouragement that we could be to each other? If we would just love one another and walk in love and fellowship with the Father and with each other, they were devoted to breaking of bread. I know what you're thinking. We good Baptists, we break bread regularly. That's not what it's talking about. Verse 42 says, And they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread. And it says in verse 46, And they continue daily according to one according to temple, breaking bread. From house to house, eat their meat and gladness and singleness 
of heart. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one, but the breaking of bread, Lord's Supper, making reference to the Lord's Supper. Healthy churches are filled with the affection for the crucified and risen Savior. Healthy churches are, are filled with enthusiasm about what Jesus did for us on Calvary. And when we break bread, we shouldn't do it just for a ritual. We shouldn't do it just because we do this once a quarter. We should do it because it really, 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 really means something to us. Hey, I believe some of us this morning, hey, the reason why we can't praise God is we forgot what a risen Savior did for us on a cross and got up on the third day. Everything the church does should be all about Jesus. Should be all about Jesus. Verse 42 tells us they were devoted the end of verse 42 tells us they were devoted to a prayer life. We're talking about a healthy church. Verse 42 says, in prayers, healthy church prays. All throughout the book of Acts, you can see that the church prayed. They prayed together publicly, and they prayed together alone in private. They prayed with, without ceasing. They prayed in the temple and at home, they prayed when they were walking along the road. They prayed when they encountered the sick. They prayed when they, when, they, when they heard the preacher preaching a sermon. They prayed while they were hearing the sermon. They prayed about every decision that were made before they made it. Me and Gina and Brina not long ago went looking for a car. You say, preacher, you silly. No, I learned some lessons a long time ago. And I said, we don't have to buy a car. We've got a car. When we find a car, we're going to pray about a car. And there's a bunch of cars didn't come home with us. As a matter of fact, we left one car a lot. And my precious angel had a little tear in her eye. That hurt daddy. I almost turned around and was disobedient. But we didn't buy it. You see, because we pray about everything. Every big decision in our life, every little decision in our life, we pray about it because, listen, God's got a plan, and it may not be my plan, but it's his plan, and his plan is the best plan. And we need to spend time about every decision that we pray about. Listen, they prayed while they were being persecuted. While uh, the one, they prayed for the ones doing the persecuting, amen. They prayed. Listen, they prayed over their food. How many times do you sit down just out of out of out of just uh, out of out of just I eat every day and then forget to say the blessing, Amen? And if we do, we're in such a hurry to eat that cheeseburger. God bless the food, Amen, Amen. God said, "Do what?" He wasn't really grateful. He was just getting that out of the way so he could eat. We need to be grateful. This church prayed. They, they were our healthy church because they prayed. All this is to remind us that healthy church is a praying church. Man, I'll tell you what, this morning, I'll tell you why I was overwhelmed. Because sometimes God just breaks us, amen. I get here on Sunday morning, Pastor Frank comes in my office and prays for me. We have, me and him, a time of prayer. Before I get in here to preach, the deacons come in my office and, and they lay hands on me. Just kidding. They do, but they pray over me. Hey Amen. I thank God for deacons that'll pray over their pastor and not butcher him. Amen. Not only that, but while the service is going on, there's men. By the way, we need more men and women praying. They pray during the service. And I don't know about you, but I can sense a difference since we started praying more as a church. Listen. A praying church is a healthy church. Verse 45, I like this one. Verse 45, they was extremely unselfish. It says, and they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Verse 45 shows us an outworking of the fellowship that we mentioned earlier. They're sharing and mercy, 
their, their sharing ministry was spot on. They had a great sharing ministry. They wasn't selfish at all. You know what's one of the problems in a toxic, unhealthy church? Selfishness. Nobody, uh, unhealthy church members can't get their eyes off themselves and it's toxic and it's hurtful and it, and, and it don't grow, by the way, because it's toxic. This church was completely unselfish. They wrote the training manual on how to be a generous church. They basically said, we don't need the stuff. If, if we can share our stuff to serve them, we're happy to do it. That's what they were saying. This church knew their Savior gave them all he had. And he set the pattern, pattern and for their power in generosity. Amen? This was a generous church. What better gift than grace? What better gift than grace? The church was aware of, of the needs inside the church and the community. And here's the thing. They did something about it. Verse 46 says they were always interacting with each other and they continuing daily in one accord in the temple. Always. They, they, they were involved in each other's life. We have this thing today where we're private. And we won't know nobody in our life. Well, your preacher needs to be held accountable. Amen. Deacons, you need to be held accountable. Church members, you need to be held accountable. And if we're not involved in each other's lives, I didn't say be mean. I didn't say be nasty. I said hold each other accountable. And listen, as a church, if we're not involved in each other's lives, then we can't hold each other accountable. They were involved in each other's life. A healthy church meets together regularly. A regular church meets together regularly. Verse 10, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25 says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as a manner of some is, but exalting one another, and so much more as ye see the day approaching. Church, we need each other in this day. Robin Corn, I need you. I can't see that far back there. I need you. We need each other. And I can't do this life by myself. Pastor Jerry, I need you. I can't do this thing by myself. And guess what? You can't either. You can't either. You try to go through this life by yourself. I'm going to tell you what, you're going to be miserable. You're going to be, listen, you better, have, you better have real good fellowship with the Father. If you're going to try to walk through this life by yourself. I need you. I need every single one of you. I don't need, I don't need you to be against me. I need you to be for me. You don't need me to be against you. You need me to be for you. And when we say, listen, a church divided is surely going to fall. We must walk through this life together. We must do life together. We are better together than we are separated. Listen, we're in the same army. We're in the same thing. We, we're fighting the same battle. We are to be together, a church united, a church, listen, on fire for the cause of Christ. And if we are, we're going to do it holding arms, lock, hand in hand. Man, if we lock arms like a chain, you're not going to break us apart. Hey, listen, if, <laughs> come here, Jack. Oh, Lord, the man's walking pews. Come on, old man. Listen, we locked. Vic, get his other arm. Church ain't big enough for all of us. I ain't leaving you out. 
Come on, Rick. Listen, as long as our arms are locked together, we can't stab each other in the back. Amen, bro. I should have got some young people. Y'all old. Y'all can't walk. <laughs> should have got Jerry down here with me. Listen, as long as we're walking through life together, you can't stab me in the back as long as we locked arms. Amen. Listen, when we're walking with God and he's got us by our hand and we locked with each other, hey, listen, we are united and we can't be separated. When Satan comes a-tugging, when he comes a-jerking, listen, he can't separate us because we locked like a chain. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I'll warn you next time. Maybe. Listen, we're to walk through this life locked and doing life together you can't build a relationship if you're not meeting with God's people you can't build relationships if you're not meeting with God's people in the same mind and in the same spirit verse 46 B I got to hurry verse 46 oh I got to really hurry verse 46 B says They were meeting from house to house and in the temple. We trying to recreate the wheel. They met in both large group and small group in the first church. We talk about small groups and, and life groups like it's, it's something new. Well, the first church was doing it before we ever thought about it. Hey, listen, they did large groups in the temple. They did large groups like we're doing right now. The church met both in the temple and house to house. The temple was the large group and house to house was the small group. The first church did it. And I just say if the first church did it, we ought to do it. Amen. Thank you, Michelle, for starting a house Bible study. By the way, that's not the last one that's going to start. It's not to replace the large group. Hey, listen, nobody ever said that we were trying to replace the temple worship. Nobody ever said we was trying to replace large group. But I'm going to tell you where relationships are built when you meet together in small group. Not cliques. I didn't say cliques. I said small Bible groups studying the Word of God together. Then verse 43 and 43, 43a, 46, 47 says that they were a spirit that the, the, there was a spirit of respect and gladness and praise to God. Listen, there was evidence of the power of God in this early church. One of the greatest, most powerful works of God can do is to change the human heart towards a reverence and an honor of the Lord. One of the greatest things the Lord can ever do is change our heart into a heart of reverence and fear. Listen, we should praise Jesus all the time, not just when we feel like praising Jesus. Listen, if we have been redeemed, you have a reason to praise the Lord. Amen. Let's pray that our church will be filled with the spirit of an, in an awe and a gladness, not boredom and gloom. I don't apologize for it. Amen. Listen, our charismatic friends don't get to dictate what we do in the house of the Lord. I mean, they aren't the only ones that can worship the Lord. Amen. We can come into the house of the Lord and praise him just like they can. Minus a few things. Amen? Don't speak good English, let alone another tongue. I pray that God will give us a renewed heart of praise. Displaying, this church was displaying an attractive faith. Verse 47b says that the Lord added to the church daily such as was to be saved. Listen. A display of an attractive faith. What attracted people to this church? What attracted people to this church? I say that it was not the newest program or the latest fads. It was Christ-exalting praise and the Christ-like love of the early church. We see that in John chapter 13. Jesus told his disciples to, that love one for another would get people's attention. Listen, the watching world needs to see Christians demonstrating compassion, but all most of them sees is hypocrisy. 
a healthy, listen, a healthy Christian in a church attracts people to Christ. What are you doing to make your church attractive to others? Daily evangelism, evangelism verse 47. How, many, how were the people added to the church? The Lord added them. We know that. But a healthy church will have a burden for those outside the church. Our vision as a church, my vision for a church, is a church without walls for a world without Christ. Amen? They will boldly and compassionately as a church, if we are healthy, proclaim the gospel to our friends, neighbors, and co-workers. So we're talking about a healthy church. Any of you ever been in the hospital? What do they do every five minutes? You can't get no sleep. They're going to come in there and they're going to check your blood pressure. They're going to check your heart rate. They're going to ask you, was you sleeping? I was till you come in here and I get out. Amen, I'll tell you about Jesus tomorrow. They come in and they check our vitals, don't they? If we're going to be a healthy church, let me ask you, what are, how are our vital signs? How are our vital signs? Is Appalachian Baptist Church a healthy church? Or are you a healthy Christian? We need to check our vitals. Are we a biblical, nourished church? Are we a loving fellowship? Do we have vibrant worship? I'm not talking about the songs we sing. I'm not talking about the music style. I'm not talking about praise and worship. I'm talking about are we vibrantly worshiping a risen Savior? And our fourth vital sign we need to check is our word and deed outreach. As Pastor Benny used to say, and I love this, is our walk matching our talk. Are we just talking? Is our, our word and deed outreach really living up to what it ought to be? So head bows, eyes closed. As we stand across this place. To look at the early church in Acts is refreshing. And to be honest, simple. They did the basics well. Perhaps there is, this is where the modern church has gone wrong. Maybe we should return to the simple diet and exercise program of the early church. Maybe we're trying to complicate matters a little too much. Here's the simple gospel. You must be born again. And Jesus said, I'll save whoever comes and believes in their heart. That's what he said. You can't complicate that. Yeah, that's simple. Even a child can understand that. Miss Maddie understood that. You must be born again. If we're going to be a healthy church, it's going to take healthy church members because that's what makes up the church. How healthy are we as a church? Father, I pray that you'll move among your people today. Lord, I know I've preached longer than I normally do, but God, I pray that your will be done today. God, I pray that you'll walk among this place, and Lord, that you'll save souls. Lord, that you'll draw those Christians back to you. Lord, we're going to praise you and thank you for what you do. It's in Jesus' name.